Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of the suggestions that someone had on our Discord channel. So if you're not there, make sure to check down here for the link. And we're going to talk about how do we get all of these amazing textures into Maya. In case we want to render inside of Maya, we want to do an animation or whatever. How do we know what textures to export and how to do them properly? Well, before we jump into the exporting thing, I need to make something very, very clear, which is something that's a little bit technical, but very important. So pay attention. In the 3D world, we usually have two shading models that have been used for a long time now. We got the metallic roughness shading model, which is this one right here, and the specular glossiness shading model. So the metallic roughness is probably the one that you've heard the most because it has gained a lot of traction in the past couple of years, especially for games. And it's a very, let's say, easy to understand uh, like shading model because we just have three main maps. We got our base color, we got our roughness, and we got our metallic. And the one that's actually doing most of the work is the metallic because the metallic tells the object, hey, this part should be metallic, this part should not be metallic, and therefore you're going to shade them slightly different so that they look like metal pieces, right? Um, then we break up that like glossy effect or that, um, the roughness of the object with this roughness map and we add the color on the very end. So usually this is the one that we utilize inside of games in Maya Blender, pretty much all of the softwares. Nowadays, I think I've been using metal roughness like shading models for like 99% of my stuff. But every now and then you're going to find this specular glossiness one. And the specular glossiness is similar to the metallic roughness because it gives you pretty much the same result. But it, it has different maps that we're going to need to use in, the, in a different way. And the way it works is very si simple. The specular will tell us how much light each part of the object is bound bouncing back and then the glossiness is going to tell us how that light is being bounced back so the lighter the glossiness the more like clean the light is going to be bounced back and the darker the glossiness the like more matted effect you're going to have so this is the one that we used to use a long time ago well not a long time ago but several years ago and you will find this mostly in film stuff because it's more precise so if we if you want like super realistic precise uh, shadings you're probably going to be using specular glossiness and if you want something a little bit more artistic and easier to understand you're probably going to be using roughness now other than this three maps there are other like elements that we sometimes use which are this ones right here the ambient occlusion map the normal map and the height map the ambient occlusion is a way to help us get a little bit of extra shadow on our on our objects and we can export that from substance painter i'm about to show you and the normal map of course captures all of the detail when we're baking from a high poly to a low poly now the height map it's not something that we use all the time but if you're going to be using displacement then the height map is going to come into play as well so let's go here into substance this is a model that i did a couple of uh, weeks ago for our premium course that you can check as well here down on the description even if you're not this was done for blender but even if you're not blender user you can pretty much use all of those uh, like techniques and information to like transfer that oh, my god you can transfer that to maya and seabrush and, and learn a lot of the texturing that we did right here so you can see all of the layers right here that make up our very cool project so when you're ready when you're like okay i'm finished with my texturing i want to bring this into an engine you're going to go to file export textures and here's the big question the output template so on the output template we have so many different options that we can export as you can see up here we got for instance the document channel we got uh pbr metallic roughness we got PBR specular glossiness, which are the two types that we just talked about. And in my case, I'm going to be exporting this in Unreal Engine 4 Pact. The reason why Unreal Engine 4 Pact is really good is because if we go here to the output template and we go to the Unreal Engine 4 Pact, you're going to see that what they're doing is they're they're reducing the amount of or the size of the textures to make it a little bit more optimized. So in this case, if we go here to the metallic uh, ambient occlusion roughness metallic, this is a map that has three channels, R, G, and B. And each of these elements, in this case, the ambient occlusion, the roughness, and the metallic information are being saved as independent channels on this one right here. So it's a very, very cool map to use because it saves a lot of space. We still get our base color. We still get our normal map. In this case, we are getting an emissive map Map as well because the axe is glowing and we get this one right here which is again the occlusion roughness metallic in that order okay now um, i'm just going to go here and let me export this to the desktop for now just to keep things a little bit faster 
and we just hit export. So if we hit export and we go to the output directory, let me show you the occlusion roughness mentality because it's a very cool, cool map. So this is what you're going to see. And it looks, it looks crazy, right? So many different colors. But again, the secret to this specific map is that we got the red channel has the ambient occlusion. Look at that beautiful ambient occlusion bake. The green channel has the roughness information. And then the blue channel has the metallic information. So by combining this three or saving these three textures in just one image, it or just one file, it makes everything a lot smaller and therefore more performance um, efficient. Now, you could still go back here to settings, and especially if you're rendering for Maya, you can go to this one and go for an Arnold AI standard. And the exports that you're going to get is going to be base color, emissive, metalness, normal, and roughness. So the only difference that you're going to get in this uh, specific one is that you're not going to get ambient occlusion, and it's going to separate all of them into different textures. However, the, the way we plug them in are very, very similar. So now let's jump into Maya and plug all of these textures. So we're here inside of Maya. This is the axe that we have. And the only thing we need to do is first make sure that we have the proper UVs, which we do. And we're going to go to um, ba -ba -ba, over here to the hypershade. Uh, here in the hypershade is where we can build our materials. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press tab and I'm going to look for an AI standard surface, which is the basic material that we use. This one right here. I'm going to call this uh, surface M underscore axe so that I know that this is my, my axe material. And uh, there's a couple of ways in which you can bring your textures, but in this case, we can literally just drag and drop them into the file. Now, here, the connections are going to be a little bit interesting. So make sure to pay attention because it's uh, something that people get confused quite a bit. So let's start with the base color. The base color is going to be made by the base color of our axe plus the ambient occlusion that we have on the other element. So the ambient occlusion, as you remember, it's on this node right here. However, the ambient occlusion, as we just saw here in Photoshop, very important, these are black and white images, right, that we're looking for. We want to see the black and white images of our element. And when you have a black and white image going into Maya, Maya tries to auto-correct the colors. Blender does the same thing. And it's very important that we go here to the map and we change the color space to utility raw and alpha is luminance in case we're going to be using the alpha channel. In this case, we're not. So now what we're going to do here is I'm going to look for a mix node not that one, it's going to be a sorry, a multiply. So I'm going to use an AI, AI multiply, there we go. And we're going to multiply an input on the number one and an input on the number two, it's expecting a color on one and a color on two. So the color on one is going to be our main color, our main axe color, that's right there. And the color on two, it's going to be this one right here, but I cannot bring the color like this, because as you can see, this actually has information from other maps. So I need to open the out color to see the RGB, and I'm going to connect R into the three little slots right here. There we go. So what should happen now is we're going to get a slightly darker color on the metal parts of our element. Oh, forgot one right there. There we go. So now we're multiplying the ambient occlusion map that we have right here against the base color. And all of this goes into our base color right there. Now, uh, for instance, the normal map, that's another one that's very, very important. We can use a bump to denote to connect the bump map. This one's going to be changed to tangent space normal. It's very important. This out normal goes to normal camera. And this one is also a map that we need to change on the color space. So I'm going to change this to utility raw and alpha is luminance. And we're going to connect the alpha channel to the bump value. It, it looks or it's going to look a little bit weird right now. But uh, believe me, this is going to like look nice once we connect everything properly. Now, from this other map right here, the roughness metallic, right now we only use the red channel, which is the ambient occlusion. We now need to grab the green channel, which is the roughness, and that one goes to the specular roughness. And finally, the out color V, which is the metalness, goes, of course, to the metalness channel. And that's it. You can see a very like small preview over here, and things should be looking quite, quite nicely. Finally, the emissive map, which is this color map that I have right here, will go directly to the emission color. And that way, we're going to have this glowing effect should be visible somewhere around here. Oh, one more thing on the emission. Of course, we need to turn the emission on with the weight. There we go. So now we see the glowy axe ready to go. So let's jump here into Maya real quick. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say assign existing material MX. And if I press number six, we should be able to see the general like colors here on our axe. Now, remember that we have this ACES thing going on. So colors are going to be slightly like different. And of course, we don't have any lights. So I'm going to go Arnold lights. Let's add a sky dome light very quickly. And here in the colors, let's go to a file. And we're going to add like this dancing hold uh, EXR. It's a very flat color that we have right here. 
And there we go. We can press number seven, which is going to go into light mode and we're going to be able to see things a little bit better. But the best way to see this, of course, is by going into a render. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. I'm going to turn the camera visibility off so that we don't see it on the render. I'm going to go to my render settings of here, system, change this to GPU so that we uh, make this a little bit faster. And I'm going to pause real quick and just hit over here, Arnold and render. And there we go. As you can see, we get this renders not looking great. And the reason why it's not looking great is because uh, we have a very small image. So I'm going to go to my render settings again. Let's go to common and we're going to change this to full HD. There we are. Actually, let's go for like a like a 2K square. Where is it? There we go. 2K square. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the, the whole weapon right there. And now if we render again, we get this. So ideally, if you did everything properly or correctly, what you should see here on your render should be the exact same thing that you have here inside of Substance. Of course, the light will be slightly different because we're not using the exact same HDRI. But as you can see, like the colors and everything are looking exactly like the same as what we have here inside of Substance. So this tells me that all of the connections that we did were properly done. Now, Here's another trick that I'm going to show you. And I actually have uh, another model that's going to make things very, very easy for you. So if you waited until the very end of uh, this video, congratulations, because you're going to get a very cool secret, especially if you're using Maya. So I have over here a little mask that we did about, uh, it's a kindred mask that we did um, on the last stream. Just one second. There we go. Kindred low. Perfect. So it's this one right here. Let me scale it up and get it like right here. It also has its GVs and everything. And I, I was feeling inspired. So I actually went in and I um, I textured it after the, after the stream. So if I want to do the whole connection that I just showed you faster, Maya has a plugin that you can enable by going to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And this one's called Substance Plugin. Okay, so you can see it's loaded right here. So I'm just gonna go to my new shelf, this should be right here. And there's an option that says, apply workflow to maps. So if I go here, I can load in multiple maps. And as you can see right here, I got all of the maps from Kindred, because I got my base color, my metallic, my normal and my roughness, and I can just hit select. And it's automatically going to load them where they're supposed to go again, base color, normal, roughness, metallic, I don't have an ambient occlusion because this was using the, the traditional like um, metallic roughness thing. But when I hit apply a new material is going to be created, a new AI standard material is going to be created. And this material, as you can see right here, already has the roughness with the proper color space, already has the metallic with the proper color space. It already has the normal map. It even has the multiply divide expecting to find the AMB occlusion, but we don't have an AMB occlusion. So it will connect all of your maps for you. The only thing you need to do is just change the name over here. Let's call this M Kindred, for instance. And if I just assign this a new material, or sorry, uh, right click and assign existing material, I just assigned the M Kindred material. And you can see that we got our texture right there. So yeah, that's normally when I'm working with Maya, I use that trick quite a bit, which allows me to save myself quite a bit of time. Let's render. Render real quick. And let's see what we get. That's it. So as you can see, we got the textures for the mask ready to go. So that's it, my friends. That's how you connect textures here inside of uh, Maya. Of course, if you add some nicer lights and everything, this can look even better. I'm going to do that for the thumbnail, of course. But that's how you export your textures from Substance and connect them properly inside of Maya. Make sure to uh, like bookmark this video, save it for yourself. Also, make sure to go and uh, check the premium course if you want. This one's available right now. It's on the, on the uh, description of the video. Join us in the Discord channel and uh, don't forget that in this week, we're probably going to have our portfolio review. So if you want to submit your stuff so that I review it live on our Twitch stream, make sure to go to our Discord and submit in the appropriate section. That's it, my friends. Thank you very much. I will see you back on the next video. Bye-bye.